please welcome Zachary Quinto. Welcome back. Thank you for having Welcome me back. back. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. You know, we've spoken before, but we haven't really had a chance to talk about Star Trek before because you were on last time for the play you were yeah, doing here in totally. New York. Right. But I'm an enormous fan. I know you are. Of, of your particular uh, rendition of Spock. Of course, I love Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. But I love your performance. I love these new movies that you guys are Thank doing. You. It really like brings back, you know, uh, so many, so much great childhood memories of how good science fiction can be. Yeah. How forward thinking it can be. How right. optimistic it can be. Yeah. How yeah. much faith there is in humanity, I think, especially in the Trek universe. Right. For yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm I'm so sorry about the death of your fan, Oof. Anton Yelchin. Thank what you. a terrible, what a horrible accident, and what a, a loss of such a seemingly Absolutely talented senseless, actor. Beautiful, beautiful guy. Uh, I don't I don't even know how to talk about it. You know, we already knew that this would be a really bittersweet experience because of the loss of Leonard. Mm -hmm. Last year, but uh, this has just been absolutely devastating for all of us. And uh, you know, I think you guys have been working together since 2007. Yeah, 2007, or 2007 we shot like the that? first movie, and you know, I think our goal has to be to just celebrate his incredible life and honor him mm -hmm. um, as much as we can. Uh, you know, it was a, a, a terrible loss, not only to us personally, but I think to the industry and and, and audiences. Uh, he, he was such a talent. And, uh, it's rare in you know what you what you do for like movie stars. I understand that it's it's rare to spend that much time with the same group of people because first of all you have to have a huge success, then you have to do multiple versions of it yeah. and keep the cast together. But for the last what now? Better part of a decade. Nine years yeah. you guys yeah. have been working together. Is it like a like family? I you mean, guys it, really we, friends I with each other? I think we take it for granted in a lot of ways because we genuinely love each other so much. You know, you, you hear people be like, yeah, yeah, it's cool, you know, but, mm -hmm. but we are uh, truly intertwined uh, inextricably and I think we always will be in such a great way. We laugh like nobody's business, but we're very lucky to have each other. You know, there's, there's no question about it and I think we are uh, genuinely connected on, on a really true and authentic level as a cast and as friends, you know, even when we're not filming the movies. Well, as, as I said, I, I, I love Star Trek and, and that, that, that series and these movies always give me sort of that hopeful, futuristic feeling. And then there's, there's a divide sometimes in the sci-fi community between Star Trek and Star Wars. Yeah. Did, did you... And I have my own opinions. I have my own opinions about those two different uh, worlds. Yeah. Do you, growing up, were you a Star Trek or a Star well, Wars I person? I grew up in, like, squarely in the Star Wars generation, so I had no real choice, you guys. I couldn't... <laughs> it's My not hands a bad were choice. tied. It's not a bad choice. No, and, you know, I think Star Wars, especially when I was a kid, it really appeals to that visceral kind of uh, adventure spirit, uh, the action figures, mm -hmm. and... I got really into that, you know, the Ewoks. Now, as someone who's like, a, I'm a hardcore sci-fi fan yes. from like Golden Age science fiction, uh -huh. and to me, Star Trek is real science fiction. Yes. Star I, Wars takes place in space, but it seems less like science fiction to me. It seems I more like it's that. space opera. Well, you know, science fiction is space opera. It is space. That's, I'm not, that's it's not my true. term. It's, it's been space classified opera. as such, but I mean, yeah. I think science fiction. Um, indicates a kind of intellectual pursuit, right? Like an ideological uh, exploration of where we're going as a civilization, as a species. And exactly. I think science fiction is like an outgrowth of sort of the post-enlightened idea of a perfectible humanity. Yeah. And that's what Star Trek is about, totally. an idea of a perfectible humanity. Which sometimes translates to boring. <laughs> when I was not a kid... In this case. No, no, not, not, this not case. now, but when I was a kid and that original series would come on, I'd be like, ugh, you know? I know. Don't get mad at me. Was it? Was, I'm not don't mad. Get mad at me. I'm baffled. Is it the production value? Yeah. Is it because? I'm not alone. Is it because like it's a bubbly green monster and they go, oh look, yeah. it's pure energy. And then they're like smashing computers that are clearly just made out of cardboard. You know, it was like it was a it was a lot about. The but in technology. the future, we can make computers out of cardboard. Don't you understand? We can 3D print them now. Yeah, out exactly. Of, out of out of anything we want, actually. One of my favorite things terrifying. about the original, like Gene Roddenberry, oh. and, like original cast, is that when they didn't when they couldn't afford the monster, yeah. they would just say, it's a creature of pure energy. 
and they would just <laughs> project like color and light, and that's how they would save money. And that's that's right, yeah. TV, baby. That is TV from the 60s. Yeah. But, you know, the great thing about being a part of this uh, yeah. reimagining of the franchise is that, uh, you know, this version of it is yes. the opposite of that. You know, it takes these ideological explorations and infuses them with all of the action and all of, uh, all of the excitement that, uh, that I think the original series aspired to and sometimes achieved but not always for me it was the motion pictures the the you know the original cast and the motion pictures that really the wrath of khan like that then it started to, yeah. to change yeah. for me uh, well, and draw me in well, in a way you have to do that you know on a big screen when shatner's acting that hard <laughs> you do yeah god wouldn't you fit do. on a tv it wouldn't fit on a tv